What the crap is going on guys? It is Connor Plays here and I am coming at you with some tips and tricks to expand your kingdom in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. Um, I'm going to go over a few different lists of things, um, talk about what I did and um, what you can do to potentially grow your kingdom if you are a new player in the game and you're trying to learn how to get the ball rolling. So um, ultimately, if you haven't already, you need to establish an income. I have a video on that also on my channel. Um, besides that, you need to claim a castle. Um, to do that, you probably just really need to join join a kingdom, summon an army after you gain some influence, summon an army, and um, take take a lot of provinces until you can finally claim the castle, or you get rewarded a castle. Um, so fight as much as you can, fight, 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 until you get a castle. And once you have a castle, you can claim independence, you can leave, sue for peace, or uh, pay for peace with whichever kingdom you were with. Mine was Britannia with this castle here. I sued for peace. <coughs> And I was given this province completely for my own clan. I still was not a kingdom yet. Had to finish the kingdom quest chain, so that's something else you have to do in the list of things. Um, but anyways, I'm going to continue on from there. Um, once you have your own established kingdom, that's that's a huge starting position. So you, once you have your, your castle, if you're already at that state, this would be the best time to expand and try to go get a city. <coughs> so, excuse me. Um, anyways, you need to recruit companion parties. That's another step that... A lot of people overlook, I'm assuming, because I didn't realize till very late that it was so crucial. I was using the majority of my companions um, as caravans, and they actually chunk out a huge amount of my income, so I wouldn't be positive if it wasn't for the caravans that I have. So thankfully, I'm positive with the caravans. Um, but regardless, um, you want to create parties. So create a party um, you can only create three at clan tier three but I'm very soon here gonna get to have another party I'm very excited because <laughs> um, it just means I can build up a bigger army and just expand uh, but this is probably one of the most crucial components to building your own kingdom having your own lords and your own companions growing parties um, because it's just it's just great it's so far I've already been able to do so very much so yeah that's, that's a huge component um, now there's, um, you know, one more tip is um, you should be aggressive. Look for an empire already in conflict, you know. Look for an empire that's genuinely damaged. And to do so, um, once you have your kingdom set up, you can go into diplomacy and look at every single empire and their strength compared to yours. And you see, I'm only 873. And if you look through them all, basically everyone is better than me. Um except for the Northern Empire who was wiped out. But I was fighting Asurai who was just barely double my strength. So it, it, it was easy to come and finesse. And they were also at the same time at war with the Southern Empire who was massively um, powerful and they happened to, you know, conflict. So it helped me take advantage of the situation and claim a province, two provinces out of it. So it was I got lucky too because the garrisons were quite weak. So that's another big thing to look for. Look for garrisons that are weak. So you can take advantage and steal that city and then sue for peace. Now, th speaking of peace, um, that's one of my main talking points. Is um, You need to take advantage of peace treaties. Um, pursue peace after taking strategic territory to um, to build to rebuild forces. You know what I mean? So you got you to gotta pursue peace. Um, basically, go to war, steal, sue for peace. Go to war, steal, sue for peace. If it wasn't for... The ability to pay for peace in this, like it, like it was in Warband, there'd be a lot different of a mechanic, a lot more challenging mechanic. But because of that, it makes it hands down the easiest way to expand and grow is just sue for peace. Like it's it's incredible. It's an incredible thing that you can do that. So maybe maybe the developers might patch it eventually. See, it's a little too overpowered. Um, but wild tier, I'm gonna use it. You know what I mean? So I am. Um, I sued for peace, and that's how I got my, my initial castle. So, yeah, ultimately, that's the main tips and tricks for growing your your um, your clan and stuff. Besides that, I would definitely suggest going into your towns, into the keeps, not the keeps, into the managed town collection, making sure you have a reserve of money in your town, and then um, grow your barracks because it's incredibly important. Grow your barracks a lot as much as you can and then train militia because so far I have 211 troops here and that's just from the I took this sued for peace it only took a couple turns or a couple days 
and then I ran all the way back to my castle, took all my troops from there, brought them back here, and um, look at this, like this had literally maybe 60 of my men in it, now it's garrisons way up, so now it's all the way up to 325, without me in it, it's 229, so it's been growing though, like heavily, so if we look in the kingdom tab, you can see all your armies, you can see pretty much everything, so it's great, it's great. Things are going well. Anyways, catch you guys later. This was uh, Kana Plays, and thank you for stopping by. Stopping by, stopping by. I hope this truly helped you expand your kingdom. Um, yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe, whatever you'd like. Bye-bye.